What do you look for in a data startup? So I generally look for some unique, either intellectual property, mm -hmm. uh, technology to help um, better store, process, extract value from data, mm -hmm. or it could be a unique data set that when combined with analytics and other enrichment can be extremely valuable in its own right. Okay, so it, in your view, is it better to be a company that is acquiring the data or a company that's analyzing the data? So, very, very good question. The, they have very different risk profiles. Right. If, if you could be successful as a platform, sure. and to be Twitter, Facebook, Google, right. then of course, um, it's, it's wonderful because right. if you're a platform, you can extract sure. rents. But if you are you know, backing you know, a seed stage company, then the kind of traction you can achieve with the kind of efficiency um, with dollars of analytics mm -hmm. and visualization is actually far more appealing. Right. So, yes, platform plays are the holy grail. Sure. Um, we've invested in a few, mm -hmm. um, but most of the deals that have attractive risk rewards tend to be more application based. I see. Okay. So, how do you think data trickles down to the consumer these days? Is it through interface? Is it through analytics? I think it mainly does in terms of products mm. and their own user experience. Right. So in the sense that you know, advertising technology companies using all manner of data and enrichment and search retargeting and behavioral data and social graph data all behind the scenes to the consumer, but the consumer is seeing ads that are much more contextual and relevant right. to them. So right. completely hidden. Sure. Um, Much in, the, much in the same way as one of my startups, Bank Simple, is using large volumes of data to bring a more satisfying retail banking experience right. to, to a consumer, most of the heavy lifting is happening behind the scenes. I see, so it's almost like a tip of the iceberg type thing. The, uh, the interface is one little part of a, a massive uh, infrastructure. Totally, but I think that, right. that's why there's kind of this, um, I don't know if it's a newfound appreciation for a, a, an even greater focus on UI and UX, mm -hmm. that the, the experience that a, that a consumer has with a product or an application, it's almost as if you need to start there and work backwards as mm. opposed to, hey, I've got a cool technology or application, sure. let's see if this thing works, and then hacking together a UI. Right. See, oftentimes the UI is a secondary consideration, the core technology is right. the primary, but in many ways, you almost want to go the reverse. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I, I'll touch on Bank Simple again, just because it's a rel relatively well-known startup. Mm -hmm. um, the founders there decided that the retail, and they had spent a couple years working on this issue, but that you know, retail banking in general is broken, mm -hmm. and that you survey people on the street, there's almost a question you can't ask them where you get a more of a uniform answer. Do you like your bank? Answer, I hate my bank. <laughs> Everybody hates their bank. Sure, Nobody right. likes their bank. So they then said, well, why do you hate your bank? Mm -hmm. And kind of built this composite as to what people really want and then designed a product that was optimized for the mobile device right. to ha with data transparency, data portability. So they really started with the customer experience and then they went and created this extremely rich and complicated architecture to deliver a banking product, but in a kind of web-optimized, mobile-optimized experience. Do you think that customer-first perspective is going to start to define data businesses as we go forward? The good ones? I think, <laughs> part, I, I think certainly the ones that are consumer-facing, there's, there's no doubt. Sure. But even ones that are enterprise-facing, I think in general, mm -hmm. the value of right brain creativity and design is becoming increasingly important and that you can't just be a smart left brain analytics engine. Yeah. You need to be able to display the value in a way that's accessible and exciting to the user. Interesting. So uh, last question I have for you. In a recent blog post you mentioned alternative data mm. and I was wondering if you could expand on that. What is it and how do you see it playing out? Sure. So. My background is Wall Street and quantitative trading. So to me, um, mainstream data are basically 
prices, their numbers, um, largely structured data of known provenance where there's not an issue of reputation or relevance. You're seeing what you're seeing, it's clean, and it's delivered in a very standardized way. Alternative data is everything else. Um, I often refer to textual data as being alternative okay. in the sense that it requires um, a different kind of processing and analysis to extract value from it. Mm -hmm. right? Doing semantic analysis is much different than interpreting a digit. Mm -hmm. um, also alternative sources of data. So instead of getting prices from a stock exchange where you know the information is good and of high quality, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, you know, blogs. Mm -hmm. And this is what brings in, right, where you've got a vast right. um, array of you know, quality um, among the corpus, so the issue of curation becomes incre incredibly important to winnow down the universe because science isn't at the point where you can pump in hundreds of millions of blogs in real time, mm -hmm. assess quality of language, sure. social graph, relevance, reputation, we're just not, right. we're not there. So cura human curation is actually, and then of course social curation is essential mm -hmm. to, in, to almost cleanse the data. Right. So that's kind of what I mean by alternative. Interesting. Well, thank you very much for being with us. I appreciate it. Thank you.